The math section of Montessori is my favorite. It has been laid out so brilliantly. I have numbered the math videos in the order I recommend teaching them to your child, more or less in line with the sequence in a Montessori classroom. One, learning numbers. Two, counting to 10. Three, introduction tray. Four, beat stair, intro to teens. Five, teen board. Six, 10 board. Seven, counting through nine, and the 45 layout. Eight, complex numbers. Nine, the mess. 10, addition without exchange. 11, addition with exchange. 12, subtraction without exchange. 13, subtraction with exchange. 14, multiplication. 15, division. The later math works focus on basic arithmetic that can be taught simultaneously with the equation works. As you probably know, Montessori works are usually done using specialized materials that are designed for that specific work. And those materials can be quite expensive. Most of Maria Montessori's math works use the golden bead material, and an inexpensive set of these golden beads can cost over $100. If you're feeling patient and creative, you can create your own facsimile and save a ton of money. I have also tried out some acceptable solutions that might work for you, and I'll describe those in just a moment. Materials you will need for these works. Two sets of numbers of units, tens, hundreds, and thousands. You can type and print these out yourself. Unit beads, 10 bars, 100 squares, and 1,000 cubes. How many is up to you? I would try to have at least 30 of the unit beads, 30 of the 10 bars, 18 of the 100 squares, and three to 4,000 cubes, enough so that your child can exchange a few. The golden bead set is ideal for this because it helps the child see and feel the difference between each of the numbers. I posted a link below of the set I got. It's not too expensive, and it is exactly what I need for all the math works, with the exception of the 45 layout, which you will need 45 of each item, and the 10 board, which you will need 45 of each of the 10 bars and the unit beads. Again, you don't have to spend a bunch of money. You can use paper. I have already made a mastered copy of these if you would like to use it. Look for the link below. All you will need to do is cut it out. I also recommend laminating. It keeps your paper materials lasting longer. Other options would be to print it out on cardstock or glue it onto cardboard or construction paper to make it sturdier. For the works requiring more than one unit bead, I recommend using popcorn kernels or something small like that because the tiny unit bead papers might be frustrating to pick up. You could glue popcorn kernels together. This is pretty fast and easy. Also a fun art project if you want to include your child. I will give you a tutorial on how I made this in a moment. You could make them yourself using beads and pipe cleaners or a thin wire to hold them together. Unifix cubes or Legos is another fun option. However, these last few ideas are simple solutions for the 10 bars and unit beads, not so much for the 100 square and the 1000 cube. So you may want to mix and match material and paper. This is my popcorn beadwork. I really like how it looks kind of like the golden beads. Not so much the thousand cube, that's a little hard. What I discovered is using the popcorn, it doesn't come out exactly like a square. It's more of a rectangle. What I did with the 1000 cube is I took some cardboard and made a pattern and then I just folded it up, just taped it on the outside because you're not gonna see the outside anyway. And then I glued my 100 squares as you can see on the back, I left that open to show, right there. But as you can see, it's a rectangle. It doesn't fill up the whole square, but it does serve the purpose of showing how much bigger a 1000 cube is in comparison to a 100 square, a 10 bar, and a unit bead. It's up to you. You can just make your unit bead 10 bar 100 square and then use the paper cube that I created instead. So let me show you how I made those. I tried out four different kinds of glue. I used Elmer's glue, crazy glue, Gorilla glue, and the hot glue gun. All four of them worked. The crazy glue and the Gorilla glue give it a nice glossy look to it, which I like, but obviously you have to be careful when using it. And the hot glue gun, it works, but it, it gets very stringy on me. So I'm not too fond of the hot glue gun. Elmer's glue is great, and you and your child can both use it, make an art project out of it, but it does take a while to dry. I would actually give it a whole day to dry. 
but then it's nice and sturdy. Now, if you bend it, you know, popcorn curdles could pop off. But one of the things we emphasize in the Montessori classroom is treating everything with care. So when you're putting things back in its place, even if I had a whole bunch of regular of the 10 bead bars, I wouldn't just grab a handful and throw it in. I would take one at a time and place it carefully in. In the classroom, we like to say, try not to hear a sound when you're putting it back in. So I really think if you treat it with care, this should actually work and, and not be too much of a, of a problem with popcorn kernels going everywhere. And like I said, they seem to be pretty sturdy for me. With the Elmer's glue and with all of the glue, all you're gonna do is do a straight line and then glue the popcorn kernels on. That's for the 10 bars, that's easy. When you're making the 100 square, you're gonna go row by row. So here you can see that I already have a row of 10. And then what I like to do, and this is for the Elmer's glue and the hot glue gun, is I kind of squeeze and go around each of the kernels to kind of fill in those spaces. And then I'm going to create an extra strip just like that. And then I'm going to glue my popcorn kernels on. There is a flatter side to the popcorn kernels, as you can see here. It has a, a little bit of a white to it on the flatter side, and that's the side I like to glue down so that there's more surface area that's gluing down and it's less likely to pop off. I also like to glue it down on yellow paper to give it more of that golden bead look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need one more. And then again, I will glue in each of the spaces. For the crazy glue and Gorilla Glue, I do the same thing. I make one line and I stick all the popcorn kernels on for the 10 bars. However, you need to take an extra step. The crazy glue is a little bit more liquidy, like water. Um, so when you're putting the popcorn kernels down, if you push them, they're gonna slide off. They're not gonna stick right away. So then what I also do is I very slowly and carefully pour the crazy glue over the popcorn kernels so it gives it a nice coating and then it all sticks together. For the Gorilla Glue, kind of the same idea. I do the same line, but it has a little bit more thickness to it. So when you're making your straight line, the popcorn kernels will stick to it and not really slide around. And then after I'm done, what I will do is I glue on top of like this, kind of in an S-turn sort of way. And then I will do one more line. This is for the 100 square. And then again, I put my 10 popcorn kernels on. Now this is, again, something that you'll probably wanna do, not your child. And again, look for the white side of the popcorn kernel. That's the flatter side and it'll stick better. Okay, and then I have my second line. And again, I'm going to take the glue and zigzag around it. And this will fill in the spaces and really connect all the popcorn kernels together and give it that nice glossy glow. After it's all glued together, as you can see here, you can cut it out. For the 1000 cube, I recommend leaving a little bit of extra yellow on the side to cover up the spaces where the popcorn kernels don't cover. Another alternative to the golden bead set is making them with pony beads and pipe cleaners. As you can see, just like the popcorn kernels, you're not gonna get an exact square with the 100 square, which tends to make the 1000 cube a little squishy and odd shaped looking, but it still serves in the effect of the child can see the difference between the unit bead to the 10 bar to the 100 square to the 1000 cube. So here I have my pony beads and my pipe cleaner and I have scissors because I don't need this length. So I'm just gonna cut it in half. And this is a great art project for you to do with your child. A great practical life project actually. Good hand-eye coordination and control of movement. We're just gonna count to 10. Also numeracy, getting the child to count 10 pony beads. Four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then what I do is I fold the one end down and then just kind of tuck it in. You can tuck it into one, you can tuck it into two, and I just pull it out. And then I push the rest down and I do the same. I fold it over like that, tuck it into one, or two, or how many, one. And then as you can see, I'll have excess and I just take my scissors and cut it. And now I have my 10 bar. For the 100 square, you're going to make a bunch of 10 bars, but you're not gonna tuck it in and finish it off like you do with the 10 bars, you're gonna leave it open. And then all you're gonna do is you're gonna put them together, try to make sure that the beads are centered, and you're just going to twist it around a couple times. And then do the same. I like to hold down the beads and kind of push against the one that I just folded, twisted, to make sure that they stay as tightly arranged as possible. And then what you're gonna find as you continue is when you twist it, you're gonna have a longer pie cleaner and a shorter pipe cleaner. So you wanna keep the short pipe cleaner poking up and the longer one going forward to be the next one to twist onto the next 10 bar. And twist. And so eventually, it'll look like that. And then for the 100 square, you're just going to tuck the remainders into the pony beads, just like we did with the 10 bar. And it'll look like that. With the 1000 cube, you're gonna make the 100 squares just like you did, but instead of tucking them in and finishing them off, you're going to take them and you're going to twist them together and twist them all together. Twist. And keep twisting. they're together and you keep adding on and you're gonna make that four in a row and you'll fold those four together until you get this square or a semblance of a square because remember these are more like 100 rectangles instead of 100 squares so then you have them all folded together and then you're going to put it in now like what I like to do for this is I alternate so I have this top one right here and I'm gonna have one pipe cleaner go in and one pipe cleaner stay out and so on and place it like that and then I'm gonna reach inside and this is gonna be hard to see but you're just gonna twist them together so that they stay and then I'm gonna do the same for this I'm gonna alternate the pipe cleaners and reach in and twist it until it's nice and secure. And then we flip it over and do the same for this side. Now for the end, you're not gonna be able to stick your hand in it to twist it. So what I did is I just kind of took it and folded it in. So it's like you're wrapping it around this last bead. Fold it in like that. And there you have your squishy 1000 cube. Again, at this point, it might be nice to have the pony beads as the unit bead, the 10 bar, and the 100 square, and use the paper copy that I made for the 1000 cubes. A little less clumsy. I hope some of these options work for you. The math section, again, is awesome. Good luck and have fun.